Hello and welcome back to Geek TV where, much like the Doctor this week, I'm going to be speaking directly to camera about all sorts of timey-wimey nonsense. Now in the latest episode of Doctor Who, our Time Lord hero, Bennett and O'Donnell travelled back hundreds of years in time to face off with a deadly new nemesis and the episode also asked the question, can the Doctor defeat death itself? Like Under the Lake, Before the Flood, is an enjoyably uh, moody and creepy and spooky adventure. The, uh, the ghosts from last week don't feature quite as heavily, but whenever they do, they're still a genuinely kind of menacing and scary threat. And the Fisher King, I think, with his slipknot scream, is a memorable addition to the Doctor Who rogues gallery. Toby Whithouse's episode is high on emotion too. It's great to see uh, Asher Ali kind of underused last week. He gets some meteor material to play as Bennett. And although we know the Doctor isn't really going to meet any kind of grisly end, the sort of high emotion scenes between him and Clara are given a little extra heft, a little extra weight, because we know that their journey together is coming to an end, and sooner rather than later. The episode also gives you plenty to think about. It's just as smart as it is sincere. It deals with issues of cause and effect and, and fate and whether or not we can escape our fate, but without ever getting too bogged down in the technicalities of all that. At the end of the day, it remembers that it is Doctor Who and it's supposed to be fun. But while Before the Flood does share many of the same strengths as Under the Lake, it also shares quite a few of its weaknesses. So, you know, the crew of the drum are dropping like flies, but you start to wish that the ghosts would speed things up a bit and pick off a few more victims, because the episode is at its best when it focuses on intimate character pairings like uh, Clara and Cass or the Doctor and Bennett. You know, we've got uh, an abundance of characters, some would say an overabundance of characters, and that means that a few of the supporting cast you know, continue to get short shrift. Uh, Paul Kay, got a big name signing for Doctor Who. I think, think he's great in this episode, but he's, he barely gets any screen time at all. It's essentially a glorified cameo. That quibble aside though, I think Under the Lake and Before the Flood come together to form a solid example of what Doctor Who should be in 2015. It's scary, it's smart, and it's heartfelt, and it's certainly Toby Whithouse's most accomplished and confident outing on the show since School Reunion way back in 2006. Well, that's it for now. Please do remember to tell me what you thought of the latest Doctor Who in the comments section, and I'll see you next time for more Geek TV.